How you doing, AIWF, TAPW fans? This is another edition of Shooting Straight with the Buff. This past Saturday, February the 13th, was our show, The St. Valentine's Day Massacre. It was a night full of violence and blood. We started off the night with David Edwards III, the man who is the rich golfer, one half of PGA, one half of the Tennessee All Pro Tag Team Champions, taking on Red Kirks. And in this match, was a fans lumberjack strap match where the fans got to buy a ticket, they got to stand at ringside, they had the belt in their hand, anytime somebody got outside that ring, they just take it right to them. Now, David Edwards III was able to pick up the victory in this one over Red Curtis, but some of the fans are saying that he had a loaded glove. I don't know what happened. I was The ref was talking to his caddy, uh, Taylor Hobbs, and I don't know what was going on. Next thing I know, referee turned around David Edwards III had Greg Curtis pin. He picked up the one, two, three. He got the victory this week. Next match pitted Anthony Wayne making his return to TAPW to take on the Anarchy Kid, Cal Redmond. Now, before this match started, I was in the ring, and Anthony Wayne took my microphone away from me. He said that he could beat Cal Redmond in under 10 minutes. He said there's no way Cal Redmond could last 10 minutes with him. And what happened? Cal Redmond was able to pick up the victory with five seconds left in the 10 minute time limit. The next match was a fans bring the weapons match. It pitted Psycho Medic, part of the Assassins of Souls, with his manager, the Dark Saint, and his tag team partner, the Dark Angel, D'Angelo. These three men could not keep Carnage down. Carnage kept coming back. Carnage was able to pick up the victory. I mean, there was all kinds of weapons used in this match. Somebody brought a boogie board. Somebody brought a selfie stick. There was a back off of an antique chair. There was a tire, a VCR. The fans brought the craziest weapons this past Saturday. But Carnage was able to pick up the victory. Now, after this match, the Assassins of Souls, they started beating him down, and Cal Redman came out to make the save. And because of this, the Assassins of Souls sent out a challenge to Cal Redman and to Carnage. Now, I know that the Assassins of Souls are supposed to be in action this week. I'm not sure who they're taking on. It could be anybody. Because after the show, I got an interview with them. They said it didn't matter who the tag champs were. It didn't matter if it was PGA. It didn't matter if it was going to be Monsters of Mayhem. Or even if it was New Day from WWE. They did not care who the challenge was from. They said they were coming this Saturday to beat down whoever was going to be in the ring. Now, speaking of the tag team champions, the next match pitted one half of the tag team champions, Kilauea, against Little Mexico. Now, Kilauea was able to pick up the victory, but after this match, Gregory McDaniel, the former Tennessee All-Pro Southern Heavyweight Champion, came out and he just proceeded to beat down everybody in sight. He, he knocked down the referee. He took Little Mexico, gave him two pile drivers, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if Little Mexico is going to be able to make it this Saturday or not. But he took him out with two pile drivers. Then he took a box cutter out of his pocket and started carving at the face of Little Mexico. Now, I don't know what's happened to Gregory. It's like he's lost his mind since he's lost his title. All I know is that right now this man has some screws loose. I mean, there's no telling what he's capable of doing right now because he wants that belt back. I mean, the belt is in his possession because he took Corey Prince out two weeks ago. Now, Corey Prince will be in action this Saturday, and I'll be getting to that here in a minute. The next match was a dog collar match. It pitted the monster Tim Jernigan against the giant known as Super Destroyer. Now, these two started the action early. I didn't even have a chance to get out of the ring before Super Destroyer was able to start attacking on the monster. The monster had the dog collar on. Super Destroyer had the dog collar on, but the chains hadn't been linked yet. Well, Destroyer takes Jernigan down. He hooks the chain up to him, throws him over the top rope, tries to hang him, gets out. They start, start trading blows. They get back in the ring. They finally get Destroyer hooked up to the chain. And they're going back and forth. Next thing you know, the monster has him in a sleeper hold. He almost takes him out. Destroyer gets back up. Now, 
Tim's like, I don't know what I got to do to keep this man down. So he takes the chain, wraps it around Destroyer's head and neck, and then hooks him back in the sleeper hole while cranking on that chain. And Destroyer went out. The winner of the match was Tim Jernigan. Now this brings us to the main event of the evening. It was a six-man tag hair versus hair match. On one side of the ring, you had the Axis of Arrogance, classic Kevin James Weatherby, handsome Ron Davis, and PS911. In the other side, you had Brent Powers, and you had the Real Freaks, Draven Lee and Robert Z. Real. Now, the action was back and forth. It was, it was violent. Brent Powers gets the pin on Ron Davis. Ron Davis is supposed to get his head shaved. Now, before any of this can happen, Gregory comes out. He starts attacking people. Then all the other members of AXA start attacking people. They lay out the referees. They lay out Brent Powers. I mean, they had this man strapped to, they, they had him in the corner with his legs spread and they took a tire from the fans bring the weapons match and rolled it and hit him right dead center in the crotch with a tire. Now, I don't know what's wrong with these guys. I mean, they're running roughshod all over everybody. They took out the referee. They took out Brent Powers. They took out the real freaks. They took out Stacy Mason, who was one of my special guests at the commentary table this past Saturday. And then after the show, because they were able to get out without getting their head shaved, after the show, I'm doing my interviews. I get an interview with Gregory McDaniel. I bring him in as the former Tennessee All-Pro Southern Heavyweight Champion. He did not like that one bit. He said he's still the champion. He said he has the belt. Corey Prince didn't show up. Now, granted, he was injured. But he said he didn't show up. He said he's the champion. And after this interview, because he took my bat from my table because when they started coming our way, I was smart this time. I took off. I was out the door. They didn't get a hold of me. So he had my bat during the interview and hit me right in the midsection and took me down. Now, that's why you don't see my bat on the table this week. Which brings us to this coming Saturday, February the 20th. The Tennessee All-Pro Southern Heavyweight Championship is on the line. Corey Prince is defending his title against Gregory McDaniel in a stretcher match where the only way to win this match is to beat your opponent down so bad that they have to be put on a stretcher and carted out. Now, we're also going to have in action the real freaks, Draven Lee and Robert Z. Real, taking on PGA, the tag team champions, Kilauea, David Edwards III with their caddy slash manager, Taylor Hobbs. We're going to have a triple threat match. We're going to have Roxo taking on Anthony Wayne, taking on Brent Powers. This one is going to be a barn burner. The Assassins of Souls are making their return this Saturday. They're going to be taking on I don't know who just yet, but they said they're willing to take on anybody here at Tennessee All-Pro Wrestling. Also this Saturday, making their debut here at Tennessee All-Pro Wrestling, the centerfolds, super freak Frenchie Rivera, luscious Luke Patterson, with their manager, Wicked Chick Ashley, they're, they're coming to Tennessee All-Pro Wrestling, and they also said that they have their eyes set on gold. Now, you're going to see all this action and much, much more. All the stars of Tennessee All-Pro Wrestling is going to be here this Saturday. Like I always say, doors open at 7, bell time at 8. It's 6 bucks to get in. It's right here in the Victory Center at 5542 Manchester Highway. It's Tennessee All-Pro Wrestling. Be there.